Hello, do you have a Valiant Ecomax boiler and you've got an F23 or maybe F24 in the display? Or maybe the boiler's bumping and banging a bit, or maybe your hot water is fluctuating in temperature, or maybe your central heating just isn't getting hot. In this video, I will show you one of the first things that I check on these Valiant Ecomax boilers. Because this part readily gets blocked up and it only costs about £10 and takes about an hour to replace it, and then the boiler is working back as new again. So you definitely don't want to be getting yourself a new boiler before you've had this part checked out. Because this £10 part, maybe all that is wrong with it. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you the best settings for your Valiant Ecomax boiler. And that will help make your boiler more efficient, save you gas, which will reduce that gas bill. I wanted to quickly let you know that I've made a video on 10 things that you can do which will make your system more efficient, which will reduce your gas bill. And we're all going through an energy crisis right now, so anything that we can do that's going to reduce our gas bills has got to be a good thing. And you'll find that video in a card above now, down in the description, and also at the end of this video. Now let's quickly whiz through my intro, and then I'll get on with showing you what could be causing these faults on your Ecomax boiler. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video useful at all, then please give me a little bit of feedback by clicking on the thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. You can click on subscribe if you think the video is useful and click on the bell if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video. And of course, share the video with your friends. I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who buys me a cup of coffee and leaves a small donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. And don't forget to visit my website where I've categorized all my videos and left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. Right, now let's get on with this video. Now here's our Valiant Ecomax boiler. If we fold down the front door, we can see that it says Valiant on the badge on the front there, and it also says Ecomax down here. If you're still not sure if it's an Ecomax boiler, then we can go underneath the boiler where we have a data badge. That's all the information about the boiler. Now, if we look on here, we can see it says Valiant there, and it also says Ecomax, and this is an 835. Now, you may have an 824, or like this one, which is an 828, which is the boiler I'm going to do the work on. The first thing to show you is if you have a fault code on your boiler. So, you may have the F23 or the F24 fault, and you need to reset the boiler. All we need to do is press this button here, and that will reset the boiler, and then it'll hopefully start working again. If the fault code does come back again, then obviously there's a fault in the boiler and it needs to be checked out. Now I need to remove the front cover and to do this, I undo this big screw in the middle here. So undo that screw like that. You don't have to take it all the way out, but you do need to turn it far enough so the clip will go past it. And then it's a case of releasing the two clips either side. One just here like that, you press that up and then the cover should release a little bit and then you do exactly the same to the clip on the other side and then the cover should then just pull away and lift off. Now I've removed the front cover, I can fold down the control panel and then we can see clearly inside the boiler. Now there is a possibility that the main heat exchanger is blocked up and that's what's giving you the problems and you may need to get that cleaned out or even replaced which might mean you want a new boiler. Or it could be a plate heat exchanger right here and if that's blocked up that will definitely make your hot water fluctuate in temperature. These are different sizes in different boilers. But first of all, always check this little black pipe here. So right back there we can see a black rubber pipe. This one just here. Now this is an original pipe. I can tell it's original because it's got these special clips which are put on in the factory. If you've got Jubilee clips, it means that this part has been changed previously. Now, because this hasn't been replaced, I would definitely check this pipe first of all. Now with these clips here, there's not much you can do with them. You just got to get a pair of pliers, unclip them, and then just take them off and throw them away. You can't use them again. So if you do have these clips, then you want to make sure that you have some Jubilee clips to replace it with, or just get the kit, which is relatively cheap between 10 and 20 pounds. It comes with two Jubilee clips and a replacement rubber hose. Now, like I said in the intro, I decided to film this after I'd removed the hose. So I've now drained down the boiler. I've removed the two clips and then carefully taken the pipe out. We can now take a look inside the pipe. Now this is a 22 millimeter pipe and we should have a 22 millimeter hole all the way through this pipe. And there must be a hole in there this size of about two or three millimeters. If I use the headlamp and then shine it through the pipe, you can see the magnetite is all built up inside this pipe. 
and the hole is so small that hardly any water will be flowing through that tiny gap. And it's no wonder that the boiler was bumping and banging and coming up with fault codes. So I thought I'd clean this pipe out so I can show you exactly how much magnetite is inside this pipe and how it should actually look. So I've used a small screwdriver and a tool just to go up and down inside the pipe and scrape out all that magnetite because magnetite can be quite hard to get out of pipes because it bonds itself to everything in your system and it seems to be attracted to rubber in particular and seems to stick to it quite well. But with a little bit of gentle persuasion, I can get all that magnetite out of the pipe. And there we go, that is looking pretty good now. Now I've given it a wash, you can see that it's nice and clean. Now you can see that the inside of the pipe is 22 millimeters and not the five millimeters it was before. Now I would recommend that you remove this pipe right from the start because it makes it much easier to get the rubber tube off the pipes. But you would want a new three quarter inch fiber washer to go on the nut when you refit the pipe. Now magnetite tends to attract itself so you may find that there is magnetite in the pipes either side of the rubber tube. But we want to make sure that it doesn't fall down the pipe and into the boiler, blocking other things up. Now when I clean this back pipe, I always use my water vacuum and I carefully clean away the magnetite and use the vacuum to suck it up so it doesn't fall down inside the pipe. Now here's that other bit of pipe, I've given it a good clean now and I've given it a wash off. Now both ends of the pipe and inside the pipe are nice and clean. Now if you do decide to take this pipe off, it's a really good idea just to take a photo of this pipe because there are a couple of wires on it and this pipe here doesn't have the pressure sensor on it like this pipe here which has the pressure sensor on it. So take a quick photo of it so you know which wires go where. I've now fitted a new rubber tube, two new Jubilee clips to go with it, and I've put a new fiber washer in the top nut up there. I've then topped the pressure up and I'm just checking for leaks. Everything seems to be all fine, so now I can refit the air intake. So now it's all ready to test. So let's turn a hot tap on, and then I should see the tap symbol come up in the display, like that. And then we should see the flame come on and the temperature start rising on the front of the boiler. And there you can see the temperature is rising as I would expect. Now if I press the plus and minus buttons together, it will put the boiler into full power mode. So now I can see how the boiler is gonna react when it's on full power. And that seems to be going pretty well. It does get a little hotter than I would like. That's probably because the plate heat exchanger is also scaled and slightly blocked. But the main thing is the boiler is running absolutely fine now and she's going to get hot water and central heating and she's not going to need a new boiler which i know she will be absolutely thrilled with and all for the sake of a little rubber tube which only takes about an hour to change now i'm just going to quickly run through the best settings for your valiant ecomax boiler that will make your boiler more efficient and save you some gas which would then reduce your gas bill now this switch just here, that just turns your boiler on and off. So if you turn it around like that, it turns the boiler off and the display will go out. If you turn it back around again, the display comes on and then the boiler is ready to use. You've got your pressure gauge on the side here and that indicates how much pressure is in your system. And you want to keep that pressure around about one to one and a half bar, but somewhere within the green area. Now this dial here adjusts our central heating. Now this temperature doesn't adjust how hot your house gets, that's the job of your room thermostat, but how hot your radiators get, which in turn will affect how hot your house gets. If I turn that dial, you'll see I've got it set at around about 60 degrees. That's the recommended optimum temperature for your central heating on a condensing boiler. Now these boilers do work more efficiently if they're set at a lower temperature, so you could try turning that dial anti-clockwise and turning that temperature down. Providing your house stays warm enough for you, then that's great, you can set it down as low as you can get it. The boiler will work more efficiently and save you some gas. But when winter comes, you may find your radiators just aren't hot enough and you need to just turn that temperature up to make your house a nice comfortable temperature. When we start going above 65 degrees, the boiler starts losing efficiency, but we could set this right up to 85 degrees and then your radius will be really hot and the house will warm up really quickly. But like I said, that is a little less efficient. I find most modern boilers today have some kind of eco setting for the central heating and that temperature is between 60 and 65 degrees. 
Now to adjust our hot water temperature, we turn this dial here. Now this boiler was set at 48 degrees and that's absolutely fine, but we can set this temperature right up to 60 or maybe 62 or three degrees. And that's really, really hot water. And it's not really much of a need to have it that hot. We can also turn the temperature right down to 35 degrees. Now that would be just lukewarm water. And again, if that's fine for you, then that is great. But I have mine set to 48 degrees and that is absolutely fine for us. Now in your system, you may find you need it set a little higher, maybe to get your shower hot enough, or we could set it a little bit higher if you maybe you want a nice hot bath and you want to top the bath up with hot water. But once you finish having a bath, you could turn that temperature back down again, because there's absolutely no point in heating your hot water up to a really high temperature just to cool it down at the tap. You're just wasting gas and adding extra wear to your boiler and also adding to climate change. So if you find the water coming out of your hot taps is a little hotter than you needed, go to your boiler and turn that temperature down a bit. And that will then reduce the amount of gas you're using and reduce that gas bill. Now, one final setting you should know about is a setting called comfort. Most people don't know what this setting is. If you turn your hot water control all the way around to its hottest setting, you'll see that a little C comes on in the display, indicating that comfort has been activated. You'll then see that the pump has started running, the gas valve has opened and the flame is now on and the boiler is warming itself up. So what comfort does is it keeps the boiler pre-warmed so that when you turn the hot tap on, it doesn't take very long for the hot water to come through because the boiler is already hot. But this also means that the boiler will be firing up during the day and night when you're not using it, keeping itself pre-warmed, just waiting for you to turn the hot tap on. Now I've turned it on on my boiler and you can see that the boiler is heating itself up and it keeps heating until it gets to 64 degrees. And it takes a couple of minutes to do that. Once it gets to 64 degrees, it will turn off and then wait for itself to cool down. And if it takes a couple of hours to cool down, it'll then come back on again and warm itself back up again, even if I haven't used the hot water. Now I will speed this clip up so we don't have to wait a couple of minutes whilst it goes through this preheat process. But now that it's finished warming itself up and you'll see there is a C in the display indicating that comfort is turned on. So I always recommend having this setting turned off. And to do that, all we need to do is to turn the hot water dial all the way around to its coldest position. And then the C will then go out. You can then turn the hot water dial back around to the temperature that you want your hot water at. Now this setting may be useful if you're on a water meter or maybe if your boiler's in an outhouse or in a loft and then the boiler will be keeping itself warm. But again, it's keeping itself warm when you're not using the boiler and not to mention adding additional wear to your boiler. So like I said, I always recommend having this setting turned off. That way you're gonna reduce some wear on your boiler and reduce that gas bill. So that's about it then. So if you want to watch my video on 10 ways to reduce your gas bill, you can click on the video just here. And of course you can click on subscribe. You can click on the bell, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And it's always my toolbox friend. Bye for now. And I'll see you next time.